How was this? Uh, like you guys didn't really have much of a, an opportunity to go see these guys at Senior Bowl. So how you know, important is this week for you guys? Yeah, I I think this. I think you know the last two years have been pretty unusual for. Um, you know, for the evaluation process for our league. And so it's kind of, it's good to be back into a, the circumstance that feels a lot more normal um, than it has been the last two years. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a real good information gathering uh, circumstance for us. And, and look, our, our college scouts were able to get on campuses this year. They were able to do much more of a, of a um, normal uh, process than than uh, they were the year before, so I feel good about uh, where we're at. But again, this this is a, a valuable um, event for not just the Saints, but for our entire league. Does anything with the scouting process change going from Sean to, to Dennis, just as far as communication, players, type of players you guys like? Does anything change with anything? Um, well, look, we've had a few changes on our coaching staff, so certainly, you know, part of that is making sure that as a personnel department, our guys understand exactly what our coaches value at, you know, at the positions that they coach. Um, but we've had a lot of carryover, too, so uh, it, there hasn't been a lot of change, but just it's more nuanced than it is change. Um, in terms of communication and the process, that that hasn't changed. You know, we're we're a team that gets uh, that believes in having our coaching staff, you know, heavily involved in the um, in the uh, evaluation process. You know, particularly for the draft uh, and free agency, and and that's going to continue. And how much is the way you guys build your roster dictated by like what the other teams in your own division are doing? Like, yeah, I wouldn't say a lot. Um, I, I'd say it's 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 a lot more about hey what we do as opposed to what teams in our division do. Do you think it's difficult to have the approach of getting a quarterback through the draft when you, you pick so far back? Is that yeah. possible or does I it think, need to be addressed before? Well, I th I, yeah, I think that would be difficult uh, just because, you know, when, you, when you're picking uh, in the latter half of the draft, you just don't know what's going to uh, fall to you, number one, so it's hard to target someone. and. Look, there. Even if you you uh, um, you know decide you want to make a move forward, you're limited in that. You know, moving from from uh, from where we're at at 18 into the into the top, you know, eight or ten picks is is really difficult. It's expensive in terms of the um, draft capital you have to give up. And so, it's unrealistic. Typically, it can happen. It's not impossible, but um, pretty difficult to predict. Where's the value in this draft? Where's the best position? Yeah, I, I think we're still sorting that out. Um, John, uh, I, I think that there's, based on what we've seen so far, I think there's a, a you know a really strong group of receivers and and, and DBs and and, um, and there's a couple other positions, but I think we're still we're still gathering that uh, uh, information. It's kind of your take on I'd like this boom of young receivers in the NFL. It seems like a lot of guys just like yeah. come in ready to play. Yeah, I think that's, um, I, look, I remember, and this is maybe 10, 12 years ago, you know, the studies were always that it took receivers three years to, you know, get acclimated and right. and really, uh, you know, get their feet on the ground and, and have success. And, and recently that it that trend has changed and we've had guys come in right away as rookies and have significant success. and. Um, you know, I think that's probably a reflection of the passing game in, in, in college and these guys being well coached at the college level. So, um, but it, it is different than it was, you know, say 15, 10, 15 years ago. It even goes back to like seven on seven stuff like that. You just kind of now start to yeah. see all that stuff kind of play out. Now. Yeah, certainly. I, I, that's a factor. Yeah, the, the um, you know, high schools. Yeah, you know, they, they just throw it a lot more than they used to. That, it's <laughs> plain simple. Not doing the beer anymore. Um, this is like kind of a, a large draft class too, right? Yes. Like, just because all the COVID guys yes. come out and everything. Yeah. Um, so how does that at all change what you guys are doing? Um, and and uh, secondly, like as some of these guys are going to be 24, 
year old rookies does that factor into that yeah too? um I don't, I don't think the age the age factors in that significantly um i think the size of the class does though and so you know what you would probably say on the surface is that having you know multiple picks in the second third fourth rounds even fifth round uh, um, are really probably more valuable than they would you would say in the past and in look there's going to be a lot of undrafted free agents that are really good players that in another year might be drafted and so um, there's there's not going to be a real opportunity um, not just in the draft but after the draft Mickey, what, what role is, I'm probably going to say his name wrong, Matt Maria? Like, is he going to, is he the strength and conditioning? Yeah, he's going to be the director of sports science for us, and, and, uh, and, uh, he's going to be head of, the, head of the strength and conditioning program. What are some of the things you like? Uh, Saban mentioned that, like, those guys cut down their soft tissue injuries. Incredibly. Yeah, I think, look, I think we're just advancing in terms of the technology and the, the, uh, the techniques and the things that he's going to apply hopefully help us with, um, you know, not just the injury factor, although that's important, um, but in terms of, you know, just the performance of our athletes. And then uh, Cody Burns, what was one of the, what were some of the things you guys like? Yeah, about? look, uh, you know, that's a guy that, um, this is probably a better question for Dennis than me, yeah. but, but, you know, he, he's a guy who we kept hearing his name repeatedly. You know, uh, I've said to you guys before that one of the questions I always ask of our scouts is, you know, who are the college coaches out there that you guys are really impressed with as you, you know, make your campus visits? And and um, that's a name that came up, you know, several times. And it was very impressive in the uh, interview process. And, and we kept hearing really good things about him. And, and uh, you know, I think we're fortunate to have him. Um. Another question is probably better for Dennis. Uh, the co-coordinators is kind of a little bit of a unique thing, but like right now yeah. I don't think there's any other co-coordinators. So we, we, we kind of went into splitting up that way. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'll leave that to Dennis just because okay. he'll be able to explain it better and 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 give you his thoughts on it because it was really his decision. You know, it's it's. Um, Look, I believe pretty strongly that that you know head coach has to determine the staff, and we talked about it a lot. Um, and you know, fortunately, we've got between Ryan Nielsen and Chris Richard a lot of a lot of uh, uh, um, defensive aptitude there and, and, and experience. And um, I'm excited that, that those guys are on board with us. That staff kind of come together the way. Figured it would, you found it would, or? Um, yeah, I think it, I think yes. I mean, you know, you're kind of hopeful that, you know, that, that uh, like adding Doug Marone, Doug Marone, who's been here before and has head coaching experience, and um, you know, Ryan Nielsen and Chris, and, and being able to keep those guys in the building and give them more responsibility, which you're certainly capable of. Um, being able to uh, retain Carmichael is a big deal as well, um, and getting some, you know, some fresh ideas from Cody Burns and and, and uh, you know, th there's just there's a lot of things that you know you when 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 Sean retired, and then you know you have uncertainty about the staff having having some continuity with this team. I think was really important. Really important. The, the thing you just mentioned about Burns, I, I think a lot of people assume that like ideas just come from the OC, but it is like a more collaborative effort. Oh yeah, it's absolutely collaborative. I mean, I, you know, every guy on offense and every guy on defense um, has input into you know the weekly game plan. They all have responsibilities, and and it yeah, it's it's not simply one guy masterminding. Um, you know the game plan for for each week. It's or the playbook for that matter. It's it's a collaborative process. Um, yeah, you know that's why you know those positions are important. And and look, one thing about college, you know, you get some college ideas that get get uh, implemented into our game and into into your system. And and um, 
yeah, so that, that that's important. And, you know, there's still there's still a hire or two to be uh, made out there too for us. So it's not it's not done yet. They'll kill us if we don't ask you uh, about the quarterback and just yeah. how you guys are approaching that position. Well, we're approaching it, you know, with a sense of urgency. That's for sure. Um, but look, we you know, hopefully we can we can get something done with. Um, you know, with one of the guys that's available, and, and, and Jameis is certainly uh, an option for us, and, and hopefully we're an option for him as well. So, um, yeah, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll go through the process here and see what happens. Where's Michael Thomas at at this point? Like, kind of, how do you view this wide receiver room? Expecting yeah. you know, to have him for Well, we're season. expecting to have Mike get back, and, 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 you know, his progress hopefully is, is going well, and you know the reports are that it's been going well. Um, I know he certainly has, um, is certainly motivated. Michael's always motivated, so that's not an issue. Um, but, you know, Tariq Wan's a, a free agent, and uh, Deontay Harris is a um, RFA, so we've got some work to do um, to improve that room.